Okay. So a lot of people are talking, that's good. Um, so just a brief background. I've been in this industry over 16 years. I'm somebody who personally fought obesity most of my life. And I'm also somebody who really cares about getting people healthy the right way. Because you know that you know because you're pro health industry people, there's way too many wrong ways for people to get you know healthy. And that's why people are so scatterbrained, they don't know what to do. Okay? I actually didn't want anything to do with network marketing. We actually first met in network marketing and I kind of got a bad taste in my mouth to be honest. I, I thought products were overhyped and over overpriced and you had to become an expert in something weird and try to push it on someone to sell it. So I kind of had a bad taste in my mouth and then Austin called me about about a year and a half before we even launched. And he just said, hey Dave, I'm working on something you know, really cool and I have nothing but respect for him. So I was like, all right, cool. You know, when, it, when we get closer, you know, I'll hear you out. And about six months before we launched is when he told me what he was working on, which was Hack Snacks and the premise behind it. And I thought, this is genius. This, this is amazing. So the reason I'm saying that is because you guys need to truly understand how powerful of a tool we have here. Because like I said in that training video, if you guys watched that training video that got sent over email, the product sells itself. You hand it out, they try it, people gotta eat every day, people want convenience, grab and go snacks, and people wanna get healthy. But what's most important is they wanna get healthy the right way, and they don't know how to do that. So it's up to people like us to educate them on how to do it. But these are two hot eating trends right now. They come and go too. I mean, I was talking to Ryan earlier, like, what's the last time you heard about paleo? No one talks about paleo anymore. Yeah. But mark my words, it will come back. It'll make a comeback in probably a few years, but that's just how it works. Atkins is like on his third run right now. So they come and go, okay? Keto's super hot, intermittent fasting is very hot too. But I wanna briefly break these down for you guys. And the reason why is because you're gonna come across people that you're gonna share a product with, and they're gonna say, well, I'm doing one of these. And then what do you do from there? And at the end of this, hopefully you can take home how to share a product with people that are doing these in the right way, okay? So first is intermittent fasting. Definitely my least favorite, okay? Essentially, it's 16 to 18 hours of not eating anything, okay? Now, I'm somebody who likes to be a guinea pig. I like to try products. I like to try different kinds of working out, eating. I did this for eight weeks. It did nothing for me except make me lose muscle, which I don't like doing. I like keeping my muscle. I work hard for it, tell. okay? <laughs> yeah, you can't tell me, right? Because I'm back with PFC, man. <laughs> but once you're doing this, then you have a six to eight hour eating window. Typically, people wake up in the morning, they don't touch food till noon, then they have from noon to eight to eat. Then after that, nothing. Now, why does this work? It puts your body in a calorie deficit. It's basically the science behind it. It's basically making you eat a lot less. It's highly restrictive, it's extremely painful, but people are following it because it's a trend. And they're getting some results, but at the same time, they're screwing up their metabolisms like no other, and if they decide to switch back to something else, their chances are is they're gonna have a lot of a rough time trying to get back on track, okay? So personally, this is not my favorite lifestyle. Now, where do our products fit in with somebody? If I, if I took the popcorn, can you throw me the popcorn real quick? If I, if I went up to Austin and I said, hey bro, try these protein, fat, carbon out snacks, they're great, and he goes, well, I'm doing intermittent fasting. Now, how should I respond? Oh, well, give me that back. That's too expensive of a yeah. sample, and I don't want to do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> or, which is not an expensive sample, I'm just saying. Or I say, you know what, that's perfect. When you have your eight hour, six hour eating window, smash on those, let me know what you think. There you go, that's it. Because the worst thing you can do is try to argue why this is better. Now, all of us in the room know it's better. But if somebody's doing one of these and they like it, let them like it. One of the best books you could ever win is How to Win Friends and Influence People. Yes. Validate that person's feelings and how they feel about their eating plan or whatever and roll with it. Because that popcorn or any of our products fits in intermittent fasting. So if you guys are sharing this and someone brings up they're doing that, perfect. When you have your eating window, try it. Let me know what you think. And that's it. Leave it all up in three days and so on. Okay? Next is ketosis. The second least favorite. Okay? This one's extremely popular right now, and it's, it's sad you see all these influencers on Instagram and stuff like that, and they're selling their keto programs, but you can just Google it and learn how to do it yourself, and they're selling these things for 50, 100 bucks, but that's what these people do. They bandwagon, they get on the boat, and they make money off of people that just don't know what, how to do it right, okay? Now, ketosis is basically switching to an extremely high-fat diet. You'll see people posting keto life and stuff, and they're posting bacon every day, okay? <laughs> They're eating literally bacon every day. 
It's high fat, <laughs> moderate protein, and extremely low carbs. Typically, it's around 20 to 35 carbs a day people eat. Now, the whole premise behind this is that this is a back burner system for your body to burn fat, okay? Once you get rid of the carbs, which is glycogen for your muscles and your liver, that's the first energy source your body likes to use, it switches to burning fat for fuel. Granted, you're following this ratio correctly, okay? That's, that's basically in a nutshell. Now, again, I tried this for eight weeks. Didn't do anything for me. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't work, but it didn't do anything for me, okay? I tried both of these, did nothing. I got back on this, does everything for me. So we're gonna watch a video in a little bit, but I'm just gonna briefly break down, like in a nutshell, a good way to explain this. Because someone says, well, how would you explain to me how blood sugar stabilization works, okay? The first thing I do is hold up my hands like this, like these two lines. Say, okay, well, it's measured in our blood between 80 and 120 deciliters. If you're skipping meals or eating sporadically, your blood sugar is a roller coaster like this throughout the day, okay? Now, when we're going too low, our blood sugar drops, and then we start craving the worst foods possible. Chips, uh, fast food, cereal, cereal, <laughs> cereal, right, cereal, come on, man. Okay, you start craving the worst foods, and your body starts burning muscle for fuel, which is not what you want, because you want to hold on to muscle, that makes your metabolism go. Then, you typically overeat, or eat the wrong food, or both. Your blood sugar spikes, and you just start storing fat for fuel, okay? This is unfortunately the vicious cycle that most people are on, okay? And even when people are eating these two ways, that's still a factor. It's still going like this. They're not eating a stabilized blood sugar. When we eat more frequently, every three to four hours, and abounds of protein, fat, and carbs, and this is something that you can also tell people that like, I just eat nothing but protein. If you eat too much protein, that turns to sugar too, okay? You can look up the science behind it. It's not good to have too much protein. It's all about the balance of the three. Once we eat the balance of the three, that's how we look throughout the day. Now, what are the benefits? We balance our blood sugar, which balances our hormones. Okay, we have better attitudes throughout the day, not so moody throughout the day. Hangry. Hangry. And we have more energy. And here's a, here's a better way of putting it, because that was slightly scientific. <laughs> Imagine, you, okay, so let's say, um, let's say, Ken, you're a helicopter, and you're flying from LA, and that's you wake up in the morning, and you're flying to New York for the day, okay? Now, when you get up in the morning and you're ready to take off, are you gonna go without gas? No, you need gas, right? So there's breakfast, there's your first meal, there's your gasoline. Now, are you gonna get to New York City on that one tank of gas? No, you're gonna have to stop frequently and refuel. So that is the best fuel for our machine. We're the helicopter. If we eat more frequently throughout the day, that's gonna get us going better than anything, okay? Now, back to ketosis. If I hand that popcorn over to Austin, I say, hey man, try this popcorn, and he goes, well, I'm doing ketosis. Great, I bet it's hard for you to get the high fat content. That popcorn's got a good amount of high fat. That's gonna help you hit your macro goals. Oh, that's it. Awesome. There you go. Now, what do you do when they complain about the, the carbs being too high for one? Yeah. Okay, so carbs. Uh, where's the popcorn here? Okay, so I'm gonna use this one, all right? The carbohydrate total in here for the entire bag, which I always tell guys, entire bag's cool, ladies, you wanna go with half. So we have 18 total carbs, okay? Fiber is four. So we're gonna take four away from the 18, so uh, we have 14 total net carbs. Now, if someone's doing keto, chances are they're just doing net carbs. You wanna know why? Because they want an excuse to eat more carbs. <laughs> like seriously. Like so our, uh, our bars, for instance, let's say we have 30 carbs in our bar, and 20 of it is fiber. That brings it down to 10 net carbs, okay? This gives everyone that's doing keto an excuse to eat more carbs. Yeah. And, they, and they do it. If someone is really strict, they count every single carb. But that's gonna be probably 20% of people you come across that are doing keto. So if someone brings that up, like you said, and said, hey, what about the carbs? Well, there's only 14 net carbs, so you just wanna factor it into your macros for the day. That's it. Or it says, oh, you know, there's 30 carbs. Well, there's only 10 net carbs. Chances are they're already going to know about net carbs anyways. Because, again, who does not want to eat carbs? If you, I, I can't even imagine not eating carbs. <laughs> they're so delicious. Anyways, but it's a matter of just educating them a little bit on how to factor in our products into their lifestyle. So, actually, all of our products, the only one that you might have the biggest issue with is a crispy cake. Because it is high carbs, but again, 
the fiber content is so high. And it's actually good fiber. It's prebiotic fiber. It actually is good for feeding the good bacteria in your intestines. So that's another selling point you can tell someone. They go, oh, cool, you know, I'll eat one of those every day. But when it comes to somebody that's doing keto and they're worried about the carbs, you want to teach them how to do the net carbs. Chances are they already know that. And then you make your sale right there. You guys saw how many customers I got. About a quarter of them were doing keto. And so um, I'll close right now by just saying, like, you know, I think that we all need to leave here, and it's a good thing that we had this, but we all need to leave here, like, and just, just start throwing it with momentum here. With what we have now, there's no excuse not to kill it. There really isn't. Again, when you come across these people, our products fit with each one of these. So there's no excuse to say, oh, I don't know what to say. All of our products fit with all these. The only one you might have a little trouble is this, is the car content. But other than that, everything fits, okay? There's really no reason why you can't go out there and share the heck out of this thing. Right. And the worst that could happen is they say no. But like I told Ken this morning, it's like you have to have that depth of vision. Like most people, you'll hand an acorn and all they'll see is an acorn. Some people might see a tree. I think we all need to see the dang forest. Because yeah. we're in the okay. beginning of something that's just going to be a powerhouse in this industry. Powerhouse in this industry. Okay. So right. um, I'll leave it with that, guys. I'll hang out afterwards when we're all done. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.